If you've just joined us, you're watching Channels Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the news at 10, and here's a reminder of our major stories tonight. ECOWAS Court of Justice declares as unlawful the continued detention of Colonel Sambo Dasuki, asks federal government to release former National Security Advisor. Code of Conduct Tribunal finds former Niger Delta Affairs Minister Godse Orubebe guilty of false assets declaration. Senate launches investigation into utilization of funds released for the welfare of internally displaced persons in the Northeast. And security forces wade into students' clash on campus over protests demanding removal of tertiary education fees in South Africa. Just a quick reminder now that all our top stories are on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. And do log on to m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. We have some of those pictures that were sent into our portal and let's share them with you, shall we? We begin the end with this photo which shows a passenger on a commercial motorcycle carrying another motorcycle. The rider is also going against traffic. Our eyewitness reporter calls on relevant authorities to arrest such offenders. And our next photo shows an overloaded vehicle carrying aluminum bars. The vehicle is being pushed off the road by these men after it appears to have broken down. Our eyewitness reporter calls on the government to stop this rising trend. And here's this young man ankle deep in flood water carrying a child along a road in Ogun State. Our eyewitness reporter calls on the state authorities to create deeper drains. We have another photo showing people knee-deep in flood water along the Ngwa Road in Aba, Abia State. And let's end with this video showing the aftermath of heavy rain in Isheri North area of Lagos State. Our eyewitness reporter calls on the local council authorities to clear blocked drains as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for sending in all your pictures. We would like some more, so do send us some more when you have them. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has advised all persons engaged in the looting of the nation's treasury to have a rethink as the Commission has announced plans to vigorously pursue and prosecute those involved in graft. Speaking in Abuja, the chairman of the Commission, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, says more arrests will soon be made as the Commission reviews its strategies in the ongoing anti-graft war. He also advised youths to emulate honest and hard-working Nigerians. Let me clarify that EFCC will continue to vigorously enforce its mandate alongside engaging in preventive initiatives such as this. Therefore, even as we appeal to the old and the young to shun corruption and other forms of fraud, expect to see more investigations more arrests, more trials, more convictions, and more recovery of stolen assets. Our nation has reached a stage where children and youth must be mentored to lead change in the future. They say the future of tomorrow depends on the children of today. If we don't do this, it, irrespective of what the Mr. President puts on the table today, corruption will not go. But with this, we're saying children have got creativity, they've got talent. Let's use this to get what it is that is embedded in them. Let us train them in their creativity to become useful Nigerians for the future and of course great entrepreneurs that will change the horizon of the nation of Nigeria. Well, let's stay in the nation's capital this time. Let's hear from Ibrahim Adra. Hey, Ibrahim. 
Uh, many thanks, Ijoma. We start off with this sad report of the former Minister of Environment, Laurentia Malaman, husband. And the duo have been kidnapped by unidentified gunmen along the Buari axis of the Abuja Kaduna Expressway. Spokesman for the police command in Kaduna State, Ali Usman, says security operatives have been deployed to rescue the victims and arrest the kidnappers. The former minister and her husband were abducted on Monday along Buari Jerry Road while returning to their Kaduna home from Abuja. The victims were said to have been abducted in the presence of their driver, who was later released. In the meantime, the police spokesman says the kidnappers are yet to make any demand. The National Chairman of the Old Progressives Congress, Mr. John Oyegu, has dismissed any rift between himself and a national leader of the party, Senator Bola Tinubu, over Tinubu's call for his resignation. Mr. Oyegu, who spoke to journalists after a meeting with President Mohamed Buhari in the presidential villa today, says disagreements within members of the same political party is not a new phenomenon in politics and should not be treated as one. Do they know how far back our association goes? Do they know that we were in the trenches together in the Nadeko days? Why can't people who have mutual respect for each other have a difference of opinion? All we had was a difference of opinion. Yes, it was expressed a bit harshly, but that doesn't remove the basic fact that we have worked together. There's no rift. Yes, we have a difference of opinion, yes. Uh, difference of perception, yes. And in politics, I think that is normal. Yes, I agree that uh, uh, the nature of the statement was a bit harsh. Now, still on political matters, the crisis rocking the People's Democratic Party in Kogi State appears to have deepened with the suspension of the state chairman, Sam Ohotu, and some members of the state executive committee. But the chairman's camp has dismissed the claims of their suspension, insisting that they remain the recognized leaders of the party's state executive council. After the Supreme Court judgment giving victory to the APC candidate Yahya Bello as governor of Koki State, many would have thought it was time for the PDP to put its house together and present a strong opposition to the ruling APC. We, the concerned members of the state working committee. But what you see in the PDP camp is deepening dispute and political crisis. Now members of the party say they are suspending their chairman for what they call abuse of office. Our party has now become the weeping boy in Kogi State. This is a party that has governed this state successfully, but upon the assumption of the current state chairman, our party is now nose diving. He turned the party into a one-man affair and he has ceased to become the state chairman. These allegations are not going down well with the suspended chairman as his group fires back, calling those behind the suspension a bunch of disgruntled party members who cannot add any value to the People's Democratic Party in the state. We are not happy over what happened, but nobody is above the law. The party supremacy is above everybody. But I'm here to serve them the, that uh, he has received their letter, but whatever the acting state chairman has to do, because he said he will set up a committee, a disciplinary committee, that will look into the matter. But whatever will be the outcome of the matter, no problem, you take it in a good fit. If the PDP is to remain a viable opposition party in Kogi State, then the party's leadership has no choice but to close ranks and accommodate all opinions to make the party strong again and ready to take on the All Progressives Congress, the APC. The soul of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Ogbomosho, is the subject of contest between Oyo and Oshun states. Uh, for 26 years, both states enjoy the ownership of the college, which has been a joint inheritance of both states from the old Oyo state. Uh, while the Oyo state House of assembly insists on the return of the school to only Oyo, the governor of Shushun State says that will not happen. 
one school belonging to two owners. That has been the situation for 26 years. Now there's a big fight over who shall be in control of the Ladukia Akintola University of Technology in Ogomosho. There's tension in the college as members of staff sit in groups discussing the event. The students are also disturbed. The well, state government is owing about one billion naira, but the state government has been taking pain, despite the economic recession, to have paid about four months now. That is remaining about four months, but that of Osho State, 15 months. Osho State government has never taken it serious. I want this school, this uh, institution, to be open. That is just my own plight, because I've been in school in this school for more than six years now, and I'm still in 400 level. Always try, try, try here and there. The position of Oyo State House of Assembly is that Osho State has failed in providing its counterpart funding for the sustenance of the institution. Before we take anything, we have to be political or other office. For now, almost 4 billion naira unpaid salaries are outstanding. The university, which has also the leading state-owned university, is now in Thomas's. Due to the various crises, the daily is arising from poor funding. The first time, a move for sole ownership was made for Oyo State was under former governor Adebayo Akala. We are there to, to severe our relationship with Oyo State as regards the joint ownership of that university. And that was exactly what I did that time. And uh, I did it successfully. I enacted in law as from 31st of December 2010. There is no joint ownership of that university again. All of this will not matter to Oshu State as their position remains clear, which is that the joint ownership of the institution, as stipulated by its establishing laws and various court judgments, must be maintained. Supreme Court judgment has even nullified anything. So, as of today, I can categorically tell this House, uh, the Chairman, that Lautech belongs jointly to Oshu and Oyosu. All of these crises is not to the benefit of anyone, and that's the view of the school's governing council. But this problem emanates from Chief Alao Bayo Adekala at Akala. It was <laughs> yes, you see, yes. You see, because I I was I, I was the chairman, I was the chairman of the board of the teacher hospital. But in the midst of this saga, he appointed my good friend Dr. Bola Adetuji to come and take over as chairman. He even tried to also appoint, uh, to reappoint Professor Bishazo to continue as CMD. Of course, it, it did not fly because it was not allowed. Clearly, there are several interests in this matter. But whatever the interest is, the key parties, that is the members of staff and the students, will want the issues resolved as fast as possible to allow them continue with teaching and learning. And that's all from this end, but still ahead on the news at 10, International Monetary Fund forecasts Nigeria's economy to recover by 0.6% in 2017. That's on business news. Do join us again.